As the government warns of another economic downturn, Panorama investigates how our state-owned banks treat British businesses. They were absolutely brutal. Their only goal was to basically, how fast can we get our money back? One high street giant accused of wrecking companies and refusing to come clean about it. I think RBS's attitude has been appalling, really. It seems they're more interested in covering things up and continuing what they're doing. While another is in the firing line for failing to support loyal customers when they need it most. When times were starting to improve, the carpet was literally swept from underneath us. We reveal the network of bank advisors who stand to profit when businesses go under. It's jobs for the boys and then don't worry because we'll make sure the money's available to pay you. And we ask, has trust in the banks we all spend billions saving been broken? Good companies appear to have been put at risk or in some cases destroyed by banks' behaviour. One of the country's most successful businessmen. Lawrence Tomlinson made his name making racing cars. So here we are in Ginetta. Apparently we're the third largest manufacturer of race cars by volume in the world. So we're creating really good jobs for people here in engineering and uh, apprenticeships. And about 80% of our cars now go abroad. He's so successful that in 2013, he became the government's entrepreneur in residence, a job which led him to look at how banks deal with small and medium-sized businesses. He was disturbed by what he discovered. Viable businesses started at the beginning of what seemed to be a process and ended up destroyed at the end. I mean, it's just absolutely abhorrent what's happened to some of these people. But also, the way they've been dealt with, they've just been dealt with in a, in, a, in a terribly dispassionate manner. His findings were published in a scathing report. His harshest criticism reserved for RBS, the bank we bailed out for £45 billion. Pounds. One of its customers was Birmingham-based Surinder Hullate, there are five million small to medium sized businesses in the UK, and he used to own one of them. Until two years ago, Surinder was the proud owner of commercial properties here in the city's jewellery quarter. If I'm coming this way, I, I rarely come past the property. Um, Why? It just brings back so much emotion. Um, I, I've stood there, I've, I've worked hard on that building, put my blood, sweat, soul into that property. Uh, I know it's only a property, but it was work for me for, for some two, three years. And uh, it was an enjoyable experience, but unfortunately, RBS had taken that away from me. His property business was financed by a loan from RBS. What happened next is disputed. Surinder says he made all of his interest-only repayments on a loan of nearly 1.4 million pounds. The bank says he didn't repay any capital or secure refinancing elsewhere. After his loan ended, RBS moved him to a special division within the bank, the Global Restructuring Group, or GRG. Well, the whole purpose of GRG is to help customers return to financial health and then put them into mainstream banking. If that can't be achieved, then you obviously have to look at then how the bank protects its, uh, its, uh, its lending. For Surinder, it was the start of a process which would end with him losing his business. How did it affect you financially when you went into GRG? Yeah, massively, massively. It, it, it basically just crippled me. Um, GRG, instead of being a place where I thought, I was told by my bank manager, would assist me, would uh, encourage me, would help me advance and bring me back into mainstream, those were his words, it in fact ruined my business. The bank increased Surinder's interest payments by 2% and slapped on additional fees. That would have meant around an extra £30,000 a year. 
I just couldn't believe that this was happening to me. You know, um, I'm, I was a straightforward businessman. I'd worked hard all my life. And now here, they sat here quite smug and, and saying, look, son, this is the way it's going to go down. It's exactly a year since the Tomlinson report was unleashed on the banks and the government. Of course I'm very alarmed because, you know, good companies appear to have been put at risk or in some cases destroyed by banks' behaviour. Lawrence Tomlinson concentrated on RBS. But is there more to the story? RBS isn't the only bank that we bailed out. The government spent 21 billion saving Lloyd's banking group from going under. Lloyd says the Tomlinson report has nothing to do with the way it treats businesses. Our goal is to support businesses, you know, small and medium-sized businesses in particular are really important to us. But that's not what some of their customers say. When Ross Finch and his family wanted to invest in a hotel in Stockport, banks were queuing up to lend money. The company went with Lloyd's because they promised a long-term relationship. They borrowed £11.6 million. What really stood out about Lloyd's at the time is they said they were different. They said, you know, we're different, we're not like the other banks, we uh, want to provide you with a relationship, uh, we see it as, as, a, as a partnership. The bank even featured Ross's business in one of its corporate videos. I think the differentiator in this deal was, was uh, first of all, our enthusiasm right from the start. Because of the added value that we brought to the process, uh, it became more about wanting to work with us. Uh, they were very, very keen on a relationship, and that's exactly what they've been given. Ross says they never missed a loan repayment, but then Lloyd's halved their overdraft. They'd reduced the overdraft limit at actually the worst time in the year that you could do that. We explained to them time and time again that this was, in effect, suicidal. It was unworkable for the business, and why would you want to do that? The company exceeded the lower overdraft limit, so Lloyd's transferred it to their business support unit. Ross says it was anything but supportive. The bank piled on fees and extra interest. He says an extra £298,000 in one year. Lloyd says Ross's allegations are untrue, but they can't discuss details because of legal proceedings. Your business support unit levies extra interest and heavy fees rather like GRG does, doesn't it? No, our business support unit will sometimes charge fees that are appropriate, that are reflective of cost, but always with a view to what the customer can afford. More than two-thirds of customers get back to viability, to be treated like normal customers. That's over a 1,000 this year alone. And why would a bank damage a viable business that's making its repayments? We've spoken to a banking insider who worked for RBS in its global restructuring group. The whistleblower, whose identity we're protecting, says after the financial crash of 2008, it was all about getting loans off their books and cash in from the customers. The whole focus of this team was to maximize profitability. And the customers were between a rock and a hard place. They were not dealing with the comfortable relationship managers that they had been dealing with before the recession. And customers were basically bullied and mistreated. Precisely what the government's entrepreneurial residents had reported on. But there was more. Lawrence Tomlinson didn't just accuse RBS of wrecking viable businesses. He explained how they were doing it. He said they were using questionable property valuations to put those businesses in trouble. Surinda Hallade says that's what happened to him. In 2011, his commercial properties were valued at around £2.4 million. When he was put into the global restructuring group a year later, the bank revalued them 
It said they were now worth a million pounds less, but the bank wouldn't show him the paperwork. I asked them to see this valuation, and, uh, and they said to me, you can't see it. They would not give me that information, and to this date, I still don't have that valuation. Surinder was now in trouble. His debt had been around 55% of the value of his properties. With the new valuation, it was almost 100%, well above his borrowing limit. They basically sat down and gave me some um, options. And the options were to pay them £400,000 within 28 days, to give them a percentage of my business, or to sell my assets. You know, and they were, they were absolutely brutal. Their only goal was to basically, how fast can we get our money back? RBS says property prices were falling and it exercised significant forbearance, presenting a number of options for the restructuring, refinancing and repayment of Surinder's borrowings, none of which were accepted. His complaint has been dismissed by the Ombudsman. But is RBS alone? Not according to a lawyer who acts for businesses in dispute with their banks. Alison Loveday says Lloyd's customers have also been shocked by low valuations. After examining a number of cases, we did coin the term the Lloyd's effect because we could see the valuations were hammering the property value down as much as 50%. 50%? Yep, 50%. So dramatic reduction in circumstances for some properties where it really was very difficult to understand any fall. If we undervalue a property, and indeed if a property is sold for less than it's worth, we'll just be increasing the losses eventually on that particular uh, uh, situation for the bank. So it wouldn't make commercial sense. Maybe you wouldn't care so much about those losses if the taxpayer was bearing a chunk of them and if you were under pressure to reduce your loan book. Our, our goal uh, as a bank is to help Britain prosper. The government as a shareholder would expect nothing more than us to run our business professionally uh, and to um, seek to uh, have long-term sustainable practices. But when businesses get into trouble, there's still money to be made for the professionals who work with the banks. Take this car auction in Leeds. It's one of the biggest in the country. And it's traded profitably for years. Were there bargains? Yeah. Depends what you're after. Did you buy anything? <laughs> Not today. Not today. What I'm after is on there. Did you buy anything? Yeah. A few bits and pieces, yeah. Cheaper than a dealer? Yes. Definitely. Keith Elliott built the business from scratch. When it had a cash flow problem, the bank recommended accountants Price Waterhouse Coopers to help. They recommended and put forward a director of PwC. We met and I got on tremendously well with him and I, indeed I was very excited. And I rang the bank the same day and thanked them for their introduction. Keith was paying, but the paperwork made it clear that PwC would be acting mainly for the bank. And PwC's review of Keith's business made gloomy reading. Lloyds agreed to lend another two million pounds to keep the auction business going. But the bank immediately ordered Keith to sell up. What he didn't know was that another part of the bank was trying to buy his company. These documents which we found out were on the Data Protection Act show that at the time Lloyd's Development Capital were discussing taking over the business. And at the same time as they're telling you to sell it? At exactly the same time. This is October, the date is October the 5th, and, Oct and September the 5th, the month beforehand, then we've got the bank, one division of the bank, saying sell this company vigorously and robustly. If that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. Three months later, the bank pulled the plug. Keith was pushed out without getting a penny and PwC became the administrators, pocketing £450,000 in fees. And what about Lloyd's? Keith's discovered they got a stake in the auction business when it came out of administration. So the bank ended up with a slice of his old company. I met some guys that you really won't want to do business with, but these are the worst. These are bad guys. You don't want them in your life at all.
Keith is now suing Lloyds and PwC. The bank says it will robustly defend the proceedings as they have no basis in fact. It says the allegations have been rigorously examined by the bank and outside parties and no evidence of any wrongdoing has been identified. Lloyds also says the financial problems of the auction business were exacerbated by Mr. Elliott's extravagant spending. But Keith's case has already been brought up in Parliament. What I want to do today is tell the story of the theft of a profitable York company by the Mafia. And I don't mean the criminal Mafia we often speak of, I mean Britain's dark-suited uh, Mafia, which in this case is represented by Lloyds Bank uh, and Coopers. Both acting in collusion. PwC say they reject and refute these claims. They say Mr. Elliott's legal action is wholly misconceived and will fail. His attempt to have PwC removed as administrator was rejected by a judge. They say other independent third parties also found no evidence of any wrongdoing by PwC. But lawyer Alison Loveday says the professionals are just too close to the banks. Effectively, the professionals are facilitating the process. So that can include the valuations, it can include lawyers, insolvency practitioners and accountants. And given the volume of business that the banks effectively distribute, then we see that they do have a real stranglehold over some of the uh, firms involved. RBS customer Sarinda Hallade has discovered for himself how these relationships can work. After his properties were revalued by the bank, he stopped paying interest. The properties were later sold by receivers for £1.2 million. RBS told us it made a loss of more than 300000 Sarinda's been in dispute with the bank ever since and has used the law to force it to hand over documents. As you can see, a lot of the documentation is blacked out and um, it's, it's really very hard to sort of make out. But uh, thankfully, if you sort of hold it up to the light, you can sort of make out the text um, just behind. And this passage is quite interesting. It, it actually refers to me when I'm about to go into receivership. And it says here that uh, we can use colliers in Birmingham as they are likely to act quickly and take a hard approach to the customer. So they wanted someone who was going to be hard on you? Yeah. Yeah, the, I think uh, they obviously uh, had a, a good relationship with Colliers, but uh, I really didn't stand a chance. Colliers told us it complied with its duty to recover debt owed by selling the two properties on which the RBS loan was secured. It says it prides itself on delivering a professional, fair and independent service. So what does RBS say about that email? We've got an internal email which shows an RBS employee saying that they wanted a receiver that would take a hard approach to a customer. Do you think that's appropriate? Well, in the way you describe it, no, it's not appropriate in that sense. But I also accept the difficult job that a receiver or an administrator has actually got to carry out. And those are tough decisions. But I would in no shape or form condone any inappropriate behavior by anybody acting on behalf of RBS. That's not part of our agenda in supporting customers. The bank says GRG helped minimise losses where it could and successfully turned around the vast majority of businesses. RBS also paid one of its go-to law firms, Clifford Chance, one and a half million pounds to look into the allegations made by Lawrence Tomlinson. And here's the result, a 60-page report which has a few gently worded criticisms of RBS, but clears the bank of the central allegation that it was systematically wrecking businesses. Clifford Chance found no evidence of artificial down valuations of businesses by RBS. I'm just reading from the review page. And the company's fight back continued this summer. Deputy Chief Executive Chris Sullivan and GRG boss Derek Sage gave evidence to MPs. The burning question? Was GRG making profits for the bank? Are GRG acting as a profit centre or a cost centre? A cost centre. In, in the terms you've just asked it, there would be a cost centre. 
So GRG is not, as is commonly supposed, a profit centre? It is absolutely not a profit centre. In, in, in the, the bank. bank? Absolutely and be, not. And it is inappropriate to describe this activity, as has been yeah, totally described. Totally inappropriate. The bank said troubled businesses cost it more than £2 billion between 2008 and 2013. But was RBS telling Parliament the full story? A month after RBS bosses appeared before MPs, they changed their minds. Their evidence had been incomplete. GRG, it seems, was a profit centre after all. RBS has also admitted that the Clifford Chance report wasn't as independent as the bank had claimed. Their evidence was willfully obtuse. Some might say it was misleading. But everybody would have to agree that it was the opposite of what you and I mean by straightforward. If this is how RBS deals with a parliamentary committee, how much reliance can regulators and the bank's customers place on the way they're being treated? Uh, where um, RBS and the banker who apparently misled MPs? Just weeks later, Chris Sullivan was given what RBS calls a fixed share allowance. It's worth almost half a million pounds. Chris Sullivan and Derek Sage have already put up their hand and have written to the Treasury Select Committee and apologised unreservedly for, you know, for any mistakes they made. Mistakes? Andrew Tyree said they were willfully obtuse. They, uh, and, the, and they've made that perfectly clear to Mr Tyree. They had no intention to intentionally mislead the, uh, the Treasury Select. We take it very seriously in terms of RBS's uh, support and the support of the process in terms of the Treasury Select Committee. If this mistake was taken seriously, why Eight weeks later, was Chris Sullivan awarded a bonus of £467,000? Well, because you, you, you have to look at somebody's you know, overall performance, and just because somebody makes make, 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 make a mistake, is that, uh, you know, is, is that something that we, 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 we need to take into account in that respect? The banks tell us placing businesses into receivership or administration is a last resort. But have they found another way to get unwanted businesses off the books. Remember Ross Finch and his hotel venture in Stockport? Three years after his company was placed in Lloyds Bank's business support unit, he says he was contacted by his bank manager. The news wasn't good. I got a phone call while I was on my way into the office from one of the people in Edinburgh that we'd been dealing with and who said, um, I've got to read you a statement. And at which point they said, we are selling your loan. We expect the transaction to complete today. Lloyds, who'd made a video about their great relationship with Ross's business, had washed their hands of it without any prior notice. His loan had been sold to a US private equity company called Cerberus. Ross came here for a meeting at their Mayfair office. I can only describe the atmosphere as like nothing I've ever experienced in any formal business arrangement before now. Um, the main man, who's the co-managing director, um, totally disinterested in the business itself. Um, he was very aggressive, and when I expressed disbelief about their behaviour, um, he said, well, look, what you've got to understand is I am a prick, which I, I couldn't believe that he would actually say such a thing. Lloyd says, under its terms and conditions, it's entitled to transfer business loans to third parties. Aren't your customers going to be amazed to learn that they can be transferred to another company without their consent? It is with their consent, because it's part of the customer agreement. And the second thing is uh, that that transfer is subject to very careful approval. It's a uh, a list of potential purchasers. Okay, let's talk about that approval at, process. Um, let's let's talk about that approval process. But what uh, one, steps one, do no, you take? One other thing, Andrew, to uh, to say about that, that they are obliged to comply and uh, and uh, follow the terms and conditions of the loan as it was originally made. So this is not a complete change in relationship. It is one that you know carries on in the way that we would expect uh, to have managed that loan ourselves. But for Ross, the relationship did change. His Lloyd's overdraft ended, and Cerberus, Ross's new lender, doesn't do overdrafts. Within months, he had to put the business into administration. 
this was a solid, strong, resilient business that had got through the recession and the difficult economic times. But to them, all of that know-how and all of that commitment had no value. Cerberus says the business was losing money and Ross did not present a viable business plan. Cerberus is socially responsible and provides professional management. The hotel is still serving guests and providing jobs while in administration. In the last two years, Lloyd's has raised billions flogging loans to Cerberus. We saw a significant number of clients who were with Lloyd's who had uh, an ongoing relationship, they thought, and then out of the blue, they're told that their loan has been assigned to Cerberus. Cerberus have a very particular reputation as um, aggressive, aggressive asset managers. We've heard from several people that Cerberus is a pretty tough organisation with an aggressive reputation. Do you accept that description of Cerberus? Cerberus are one of uh, a large number of um, uh, providers that we work with. You sold billions um, of loans to them. We check to make sure that these organisations are doing the job that they're asked to do and that they do behave in a responsible way. RBS says it's acting responsibly too. It's decided to close down its business restructuring group, GRG. But how has the bank treated its toughest critic? Lawrence Tomlinson has found out for himself just how easily RBS can turn on customers. The deputy chief executive of the bank, Chris Sullivan, wrote to me and uh, said they were cancelling all my accounts, both my business accounts and my personal accounts. Did they give a reason? Yeah, they said it's down to a, a breakdown in trust. They even went so far as to saying that I would have to pay back my mortgage. Really? Uh, Your mortgage? Absolutely. RBS had to back down on the mortgage, but Lawrence Tomlinson has had to move everything else to another bank. It's just really designed, I think, to cause me maximum stress and problems. But you're the entrepreneur in residence at a government department. I would have thought you'd be bomb-proofed. Well, clearly I'm not bomb-proof. RBS says it closed down Lawrence Tomlinson's accounts because of a long-running dispute and that it had nothing to do with his critical report. The government has referred RBS to the Financial Conduct Authority. It's due to report in the new year. For far too long, we've had a handful of banks exercising control of the business lending market for small, medium-sized companies. It's very unhealthy, and the relationship was a very unbalanced and unfair one. Business people need to know banks won't turn on them when times get hard. Our fathers, forefathers, and people who have come before have seen the bank and the bank manager as a trusted relationship. You can no longer trust that relationship. They've taken advantage of it. Our economic recovery needs businesses, and businesses need banks they can trust right now. That trust is in short supply. Coming up at 10 as the government prepares to release about the killers of Lee Rigby, the Home Secretary.